Hi, I'm Dr. Jennifer Marte. I'm an engineering lecturer at a university and also the mother of three young children. My husband is also in STEM and so we decided that we wanted to get our children involved in STEM from a very young age. Now, you might be wondering what STEM stands for. S stands for science, T for technology, E for engineering, and M for mathematics. This is going to be the first of four videos I do, and each one will focus on a different age group. So I've split them from zero to three being baby toddler, three to six being preschool, six to 11 being primary school, and 11 to 16 being secondary school. This video focuses on preschool, which is three to six years old, which in fact is the age group of two of my children. So I've made a website that provides different ideas of what you can do in each of those categories with your children. And I've tried to find things which were not necessarily very expensive, could be done with household items when possible. Uh, but there are also a few kits in there that you could try out. What I wanted to do in this video is highlight our, as a family, our favorite thing in each of those categories. Uh, and, and actually we're gonna pick the top five um, so there's going to be two within technology, not just one, um, and explain a little bit about them. So within science, my my kids' favorite topic was the physics buoyancy project um, called Sink or Float. And my kids absolutely love this. They play it over and over again. They play it in the bath. They play it outside with, in buckets and stuff. But essentially what they do is they wander around the house. They figure out what they want to see, if it will sink or swim and they drop it into a buck of water and see what happens. Um, they have done this many times, like I said, so the replayability is really good and it teaches them an idea of the density of things. Um, and they just think it's fun because they get to play in water. Right, for our favorite things within technology, like I said, there were two of them. The first one was Rock and Robot, which we have here. This is one of the first games that they were playing together. As you can see, it was originally £12. It went on sale for 6 I actually got it from a charity shop for 1 So have a look through your charity shop and you can find some really fun things. So not free, but very cheap. And essentially what you're doing here is you build up a robot based off the card that you're given. And there are lots of different cards. So each card has a slightly different configuration. You've got to find the pieces quickly, put them together before... There's a, there's a thing down here at the bottom that vibrates, makes all the pieces fly. My kids didn't actually build the robot to the cards very often. They just liked building it and watching it explode. So, um, well worth the pound. And they're still playing it now. It says it's for ages two to five. I think we got it when my kids were three. Uh, the oldest one was three. And they're still playing it now. That said, the one that's four enjoys this a lot more than the one that's five. The one that's five finds it a bit babyish now. The other thing we liked for technology was making stuff out of recycled material. So my kids absolutely love it. When I get a bunch of cardboard boxes, uh, plastic bottles, things like that, and put them on the floor and just say, do what you want with it. Uh, and they will build all kinds of amazing things. So I've got a picture of a car they made over the weekend. Uh, where they tied the water bottles onto the cardboard box using some old shoelaces that the shoes had fallen apart, but we kept the shoelaces. Uh, and then taped on a box at the end and they decided it was a car with a boot and then they made it into a racing car. They raced it all around the house. Um, so that occupied them for a good 30 minutes. Let them be creative, let them use things that we were going to recycle anyway. And they really liked it because they were driving that project. I didn't tell them what to build. They built whatever they wanted. So they absolutely love doing that. The difficulty we've found with that project actually is that at the end, they want to keep it. And it's quite a big thing. We don't want to keep it around the house. So we have to make sure that it disappears without them noticing. So be careful about that. Within engineering, our top thing that we do over and over again is Lego. Um, sometimes we get kits if we find them for very, very cheap because the kits can be quite expensive, but actually the kids prefer to just build whatever they want anyway. What I found with kits is they would lose one of the pieces and I would find it really frustrating because then the whole kit in a way was ruined because they couldn't build what the kit was meant for, but they could still build other things and that's what's happened in, in, in reality. So, um, Lego is always a hit. We have giant boxes of it and just put it on the floor, let them go 
and their imagination runs wild. Um, the downside of it is we also find Lego all over the house at all times. So be careful because when you step on it, it can hurt. We had a runner up in engineering. I said top five. This is the runner up is Marble Run. My kids really loved Marble Run. Again, they could create whatever they wanted, but we've had to put it away in the attic for the moment because we have a one year old who likes to put everything into her mouth. So the marbles were a choking hazard and Marble Run has been banished to the attic for now. And finally, rounding out our top five in mathematics was Monkey Challenge. Here is the box. Again, we got it from a charity shop. It was 50p. This is probably the best 50p I've ever spent. What you do in this game is you have a monkey with a balance and you get various cards, which you can use if you want to. They're different colors to talk about the different difficulty levels. And what you do is you balance the monkeys on the scale. So one on each side and it balances. You put another one over here, it goes down, put it over here. My kids have absolutely loved this game. That said, they almost never used the cards. What they did is they used it just to figure out how much they had to put on one side to make the monkey unbalanced. So they weren't very interested in balancing the monkey. They wanted to unbalance the monkey. Fine by me, they're learning more or less. Uh, there are also numbers. So here's the number two, for example, and they could balance that. So this balances because, I don't know if you can see, but there's the number two and one monkey over here and there are three monkeys over there. So they're getting an idea that this two is worth two of the monkeys and balancing them that way. And I'm trying to get them to get into addition like this. And in fact, some of these cards have addition on them, like this one, for example, or this one. So there's lots of different ways you can play this game. Like I said, though, my kids aren't necessarily playing it in the intended way, but they do enjoy getting the monkey to balance or, in fact, unbalance. The problem with this is that they like to put things that are really heavy on the scale and that can break it. And these little monkeys are fairly easy to lose. Now, that said, there are a lot of them in the kit. So that rounds out our top five with one addition of that marble run of what my kids have liked within the age range of three to six years old. Like I said, this is the preschool range. Um, and so when I looked at this overall and I wanted to do a summary, the thing that seems to come across here is that my kids really enjoyed independent investigating uh, and they really enjoyed free building. So if I gave them instructions on what to do, that wasn't what they wanted. What they wanted to do was have a whole bunch of materials to do whatever they wanted with. They wanted to build on their own with Lego. They wanted to build on their own with Marble Run. They wanted to take those recycled goods and make it into cars and people and animals. They wanted to do what they wanted to do, not what I told them to do. So I think for this age group, that fits in really well with the Development Matters document that's been put out by the Department of Education in the UK. Um, this goes under playing and exploring, the first of the three categories they said were really important in the early year foundation stage. So this has matched really well with the government advice and my kids definitely liked it. So I guess as a summary, expensive kits and things wouldn't have gone over that well with my kids. Uh, they just wanted to play on their own. They wanted to do what they wanted to do uh, and give it a try and build random things and show off their creativity. So if you have kids in this age range, I would suggest having a look through all of the activities on the website, um, but also have a look at these ideas of sink or float um, and making stuff out of recyclables because those are free to do. Um, there was the monkey challenge game, which technically we bought, but it was cheap. Again, Rock and Robot was cheap. Lego can be expensive or can be cheap, depending on where you're getting it from. But these are things that my kids enjoyed. Feel free to leave comments down below on things that your kids have enjoyed. Thank you. <laughs>